Yeah, let's talk about one of the arguably one of the best light heavyweight uh, title one of the greatest fights. fights. In the this is a big statement. You ready? One yep. of the greatest fights I ever saw. My son Teddy yep. was uh, called me up after the fight, and um, he, he he hadn't seen it, so he wanted to see if it was worth seeing. I said, "Bud, one of the greatest fights I ever saw." He said, "Wow." He said, "That's enough. I'm in." He goes, "That's <laughs> that's a big enough statement." One of the, yeah. I mean, that's uh, it was it was Mickey Ward and 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 Gaddy won. Um, it was every bit of that, you know, because Theo Corrales won. Um, I mean, it was all of that, you know. Uh, it was it was as I've said before, Ken. It's like reading a book, and each round is a chapter, uh, a chapter of life. I mean, it was. <laughs> Uh, there was so many times when I, I was watching with my wife, I said, oh, Glover is going to lose this. And then the next thing you know, he takes him down. I'm like, where is he getting the energy? He looks like he can't even hold his hands up. And the next thing you know, he fires off a barrage and gets a takedown. And there's then, an X factor, and Pohosk, though. There's an X factor. Yeah. You know why I say it's one of the greatest fights I ever saw? The was guy it? doing this was 42 years old. <laughs> it's so now, think it's about crazy that. even equate, here. You have to equate that into... You know, into it. You have to put that in. You have to. He was four. It'd be extraordinary if he was twenty-two, but he was Teddy, forty-two. Ten years ago, forty-two ten years, years ago, old. Ten years ago, he was working as a landscaper in my neighborhood in Westchester. He worked for the guy who cut my grass. You ten, you knew enough years. not to start a fight with him, right? You knew enough oh, no, not to was, say, the "Hey, you guys. missed some weeds over there." Yeah. <laughs> I, I never do that to anyone. I just oh. go out and pick up the weeds myself. The um, yeah, but this kid, he's like been, he's just been sticking around, constantly trying, and it's like one of the oldest cliches, like you don't know if you don't try, and he just keeps trying, keeps trying. The thing that sucks for Glover is when you're the champion, you get the pay per view points. So this was probably the biggest, the first and biggest. Pay uh, pay-per-view payday he's ever had and all he had to do was survive 28 more seconds and he at, the, at a minimum looking at the scorecards he gets a draw which means he gets another pay-per-view fight I, it was heartbreaking no no for he him. doesn't I get a draw he, he doesn't get a draw he gets a win he was ahead on the well, scorecards no, he was ahead on the, the scorecards. Score here. It was a draw. One guy had a draw going into the fifth. Go ahead, go ahead. One guy had Glover. One one guy had Glover up by two rounds, yep. two points, and one guy had Glover up by one point. So if if it's he, a one point, he wins. hold on. If it's a one point, if Pohaska wins, he was that winning fifth that round, round though. He was winning that round though. Yeah, I mean, but when if he it, finishes, it went, all, it went off the cliff. Quick. If he doesn't get choked out and the guy just pummels him, and let's just say Pohaska wins the fifth, p potentially. If, right, if he okay. doesn't choke him out, if he if he chokes him, if he if he beats him up and doesn't win, he gets he goes up by one point on one scorecard. He can't He's lose. down by one point, and he um, and he is, and it's a tie for. So he and gets him. He, he gets. Hold on. Pohaska will win by one on one card, get a draw on another, and he'll lose on one. So he would have got a, a split draw. Like yeah. one guy had him winning, one guy That's had him losing. That's what I'm saying. He one. couldn't lose. He couldn't yeah, lose. Yeah, no, he couldn't lose, but he, he could have got. Yeah, so I'm saying, at worst case, he gets a draw no matter what. But he would have had, no matter what happens, if he survives that round, even if he loses, he gets a draw, Ken, he gets a rematch, he whole, gets another payday. No, but that's what I was saying. The whole thing, the whole thing, really hung on he made a strategic mistake in the last round he heard him he is he heard him striking badly 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 and he backed him into the ropes and Prozanka was really really in bad shape and Texera made a decision to take him to the floor to take him to the mat if he stayed on his feet I'm gonna say I don't care I know that I'm not a MMA lifer but I'm a fight lifer I'm going to say he wins that. He he stops him. But he, and I know how tough Poshaka uh, is. I, I understand what he survived all night and how special he showed himself to be. I get all of that. But Texera made a mistake taking him to the floor, and it was his instincts. It was a split instinct because that's his strength to go to the mat. And that's what everyone thought in this fight he had to do. They all thought he had to go to the mat because he's so strong and good at grappling that he had to take away Prasaka's striking abilities and 
as you know his youth in in that way he could strike fast where he was dimensional um explosive um even unorthodox a little bit but very explosive uh, that he had to take you know he had to quell some of that explosiveness that multi dimension of his on on the striking where he took him to the floor and killed some clock and used his grappling and his physical strengths down there, you know, to give himself a chance to beat this young, tremendous fighter. And um, that's what everybody thought was the blueprint going in. And the funny thing, you know, sometimes funny things happen on the way to the uh, to the octagon where what really happens is it turns out that he's an underrated, Texera's an underrated striker, and that his physical strength, he's so damn strong, equates to striking as well as to an advantage on the floor when he's grappling because he can punch like a son of a gun. And also his mind, his experience, where he was calm enough in the late rounds, he was calm enough to to see what he had to do, to see what punches had to be thrown. And he used his timing. His experience brought that along. But Texero can use his timing to negate the speed, to to overtake the speed advantage that Prozaka had on him, where he timed him with beautifully placed right hands that were devastating, devastating. Most guys would have got knocked out. And he heard him with that. So here's the ironic part. He's supposed to be on the mat to have a chance to win. His, meanwhile, he's standing, and his best chance to win turns out to be standing where nobody thought that was it. And he's got this guy on the brink of a knockout, and he goes to the place instinctively where everyone thought he needed to go to, to the floor. But he didn't need to at that time. He shouldn't have. He made a strategic, and he did it twice in the last round. Because after they got up, he went back to strike and he hurt him again. And then he took him to the floor again. So he really made two strategic mistakes that cost him keeping the title. It really did. But all the credit to Prochaka. Am I saying him right? Prochaka. Prochaka. I'm sorry. There you Uh, go. uh, Pro, let me. Let me write that. I down. think okay. that's it. I mean, the two of us aren't exactly the no. kings of pronunciation, no, no, but I, I think that it's Prohaka. I'll go with you. Yuri. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, Prohaka, to his credit, he earned being champ, not just because of his physical skills. Going back to what we talked about with Belanga and all that stuff, listen. He proved he's got the it factor. He's proved that he is mentally strong. He proved that he's not physically only strong, and he is. And he did a great job. He showed how strong he is and dimensional he is on striking and on the mat. But the most important strength he showed, the one he needed to win this title against this very special man. I'll say it again. This very special 42-year-old man. (laughs) He's the George Foreman of UFC. He, to beat this man, it wasn't enough that he just had power. For for Pachaga to beat Texera, he needed the strength, the inner strength. The strength where when you do a CAT scan, you look into the guy's intestines. That has to be there. When you looked into his intestines, and he went through a CAT scan in this fight, he he did not get out of this fight free. There was a CAT scan put on him by Texera to look into his intestines, and there was the stuff that had to be there, that had to be there. And if it wasn't there, he loses. He had to have that special stuff that Texera had. He had to have what we talked about that Belanga doesn't have, doesn't have yet at least. He had to have that where he was able to go into a dark room, a room he'd never been in before, a chamber that was unknown to him and find a light switch, 
find it. And he did. And not everyone could do that. They could be strong. They could be fast. They can be all the things in you know, have the intellect under pressure. They they can be multidimensional, but they don't all have that. If he doesn't have that, if Pozhanka doesn't have that, he's not champion today. He's not champion today. He had to have that special quality, that inner quality, that real strength. That is real strength. He had to have that. And um, he refused to submit. He refused to be diminished in his mind, to lose his confidence. He refused. He refused when the boogeyman came. He said, get the F out of here. When the devil came to the door, <laughs> and the devil comes to everyone's door, Ken. The devil comes to everyone's door. When he came, he get the F out of here. You're not wanted here. You're not allowed here. Get out of here. He locked the door the way the great warrior of Vander Holyfield used to do. When, when it came to him, he locked the door. And some people don't lock the door, Ken. It's that, that's the truth. That's the truth in life, okay? And that's the difference in life. And that was the difference. If he didn't have that, he doesn't beat this great man, this great Texera. And I hope they both got bonuses from our man, Dana, because they sure as hell did. I'm sure they did. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they I'm did. Sure they no, I'm sure they the did. Night. I'm sure they the did. The best thing he could do is give him a rematch. And it won't, it won't be close. It'll be the same thing I said before. This great yep. man, Texera, did everything he could, and he still lost. He did make a mistake, though, but he still lost, and he's 42 years old. And you know what? As great as he is, it'll be like Jersey Joe Walcott the second time with Marciano, Alexis Oquayo the second time with Aaron Pryor. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll be the same as it was with Donaire the second time with Inouye. And the, the, the great former champion did everything he could the first time with this younger champion, this special young, and he won't be able to bring it back. He, it'll be gone. It'll be left in the ring, mentally and physically. It'll be left in the ring, and people will be shocked. It'll be a one-round fight, and people will be shocked. Now, does he deserve to, he spe- does he deserve the chance to get that? Yes. 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 He deserves it. He deserves anything he wants. 